Well, welcome to the Ask Dr. Wilson show. I'm your host, Dr. Nick Wilson. And today we're going to be talking about adherence to the mask mandate. We're going to be talking about COVID-19 statistics. And you may have seen a letter from your local health department encouraging you to get the flu shot this year. We're going to go through what the science of that is or if there are some holes in the science. So we're going to cover that today. But hey, remember, this is a show where we try to, and I try to give you the best and most cutting edge, up-to-date health information that helps you make the best decisions possible when it comes to your health, your future, your family's future. And with all of the, let's say, hype or scare of the pandemic and the virus, you know, there's a lot of people who are confused and a lot of people who just don't know what to do. And I've, I've received just a lot of feedback over the past six weeks of how many people who are so thankful that, you know, there's someone helping to maybe point out some of the misinformation that's out there. And people who are so thankful for someone being able and willing to talk about the injustice, the maybe overreach that is happening at the local level through the county health departments. And there's a lot of people who are just thankful for a doctor being willing to speak up. So I hear you. That encourages me. Continue to send those things into me. If Listen, if this has been an encouragement to you, it's an encouragement to me to hear back from you. So keep sending that in and uh, it really does bless me. With that, there are also the other side of that. Whenever there's something that might be uh, more polarizing, you're definitely going to get the naysayers. And I've heard from you too. And listen, I, I view that as every source of feedback is just that it's, it's, it's feedback. And so I hear you. And so I want to address a couple of things. One of them is why has your show become political? It hasn't, it hasn't become political. I'm talking about health. The problem is, is that these health topics all of a sudden have become more political. I can't help the fact that there is a divide and there's been some political mishandling or handling of, of the situation. And there's political opinions now about how the virus is being handled. When it comes to masks, it should not be a political discussion. I agree. I don't want my show. I never have had my show be political. And I, and I, and I certainly don't want it to be that now. So I don't shy away from the information just because now it has become more political. However, we cannot, we cannot allow politics to dictate our decisions when it comes to health and the protection of our public's health. So when it comes to whether politics are involved or not, it's impossible to predict how health is going to be used in the political uh, arena and how it's then going to be polarizing. And so what I'm going to do and continue to do is stick to the truth as I know it, give you the facts, give you the science, give you the research, give you the background information. And listen, there's some information, if you actually listen to what I'm saying, that actually falls more in the middle or sometimes on the other side of the aisle. Many of these things are not partisan. However, as they've become more partisan, I'm aware, I hear you, I'm thankful for your feedback. This is not a political show, it is a health show, and it's a, a show where I try to give you the most cutting edge and updated natural health information to help you live your best life now. That is the mission. With that said, did you see, here recently, the Marion County Health Department, if you are in Indiana, and listen, this is not about a local show or not because this reach is now well beyond our local Indianapolis area, but the county health departments, and we knew this was coming, are making a major push for the flu shot. There's a recent letter that was sent out from Dr. Virginia Kane here in Marion County in Indianapolis, and I want to give you some of the language that was used in this letter. This was a letter that was sent to the parents of school-aged children in Marion County. And it's talking about the war against COVID-19 and how 
we can all do our part, how we're all in this together, but it also is an encouragement to get the flu shot. I want to read you a part of this from Dr. Virginia Kane from the health department. It says, and I quote, now more than ever, it is important that everyone over the age of six months receive an annual influenza vaccine. Not only will this prevent possible co-infection, it may also help preserve the necessary medical resources in case of a significant increase in COVID-19 cases. Two things about that letter that was sent to parents of school-aged children here in Marion County. Two things about this. It's raised some eyebrows from concerned parents. And these parents are just asking the simple question of, hey, tell me the information how a flu vaccine is going to prevent co-infection. They want to know the research. They want to know what's out there about that and how it's justified. You know, the one study that exists on COVID-19 and the flu, the authors say, and I quote, COVID-19 and influenza co-infection is rare. So the research, they, researchers, they looked at 1,103 patients who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. Among them, six patients, six out of what's the number? 1,103 patients, so six. That's 0.54% were diagnosed with co-infection with influenza. In the author's report, and I'm going to quote this as to not be misinterpreted, quote, our cases were mild to moderate in severity. And here's what they said, is that the COVID-19 and influenza co-infection is, quote, rare. Could it be that when you get diagnosed with COVID or you're dealing with the SARS COVID, so you're dealing with the, the, the viral infection, that your body innately raises its core temperature. And when you raise your core temperature, it's going to ward off and fight against anything, including the flu. So this co-infection, the researchers say is very rare. Why is it that it's so rare? Could it be that your body is fighting off both at once, that it's smarter than what we give it credit for? Or could it be that these PCR tests that we're using is detecting fragments of a virus, not necessarily the infection of the virus. By the way, did you know that, that that's what's happening is that we're detecting fragments of the virus and not necessarily a person who's actually infected with the virus. That's different, by the way. But yes, yet they also are dealing with flu. And so now you're going to have more people who are being diagnosed as a co-infection, yet their body is really just dealing with it all at once because the body is innately intelligent. Hey, get on the Facebook uh, Facebook page, facebook.com slash Wilson. I posted about the flu shot. Also on YouTube, you can see the whole episode there. On Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, anywhere where, anywhere where podcasts are played, you can listen to the entire podcast episodes, but I talked recently about the flu shot, the ingredients. You can get on there. Hey, make the decision for yourself. There's no reason why individual choice should be taken out of the matter. When we try to mandate things across the board for a one size fits all version of whether it's medicine, whether it's economics, whether it is child, you know, raising your children, whether it's marriage, there's no one size fits all solution. And we need to be aware of that. And we also need to stand up for our individual rights. Again, it's our body. It's our choice. What goes into our bodies is certainly something that we need to consider and certainly something that we need to put the highest priority on. Because again, this is all about health, is it not? So what goes into your body should be at the highest of priority and you knowing that and having been armed with all the research. So get on YouTube and find my channel there. Just type in Dr. Nick Wilson. It's going to pop up and you can watch the episode about the flu shot. Hey, did you see what just was recently published within the last few weeks was that the adherence to the mask mandate has increased by over 20% over the summer. So this is from Pew Research and I'll post this in the talk notes or in the comments or somewhere below where you can find this. And they are 
demonstrating that now 85% of Americans are now wearing face covering or masks when they go out in public. That's up by 20%. Looking at this research, it shows that the same questions were asked in June during the summer, and that number was 65% said they had been regularly wearing masks. Now that number is up to 85% of all U.S. adults. So here's what's interesting. My curiosity is, how and why did that number go from 65% to now 85%? So it went from 35% of, of people not wearing them to now only 15%. My curiosity is why? It doesn't say why. There was no polling about that. So why did they do it? Was it because that they go to the grocery store, let's say, and they look around and they say, well, geez, you know, no one else is not wearing a mask. So, you know, I have to wear one too. Or maybe it's because the grocery store has somebody on the outside, which says you can't enter. And just that extra barrier says most people will say, hey, you know, I'm just going to put it on to get in and get out. Even if I do or don't believe in it, is it because there's genuine fear now as the summer has progressed, there's more fear now of, of the virus, or there's more concern over whether that person is going to be a transmitter or not. It doesn't say that. Or maybe it's that that person gets out in public and is just now being worn down, is now being worn down by the fact that, hey, just trying to go against the grain here is now wearing me out. Whatever it is, we know that it has increased over time from now 65%, from 85% now to 65%. Again, the study doesn't say why, but here's what's very interesting is that this comes as the number of coronavirus cases has spiked far beyond the major metro areas that saw a high infection rate in fatality counts earlier in this year. Some are now questioning, wait a second, if we've now seen such a great uptick in the number of people who are wearing masks, some areas of the country saw 33% spike in people wearing masks. Why aren't the number of positive cases, why aren't they going down? Why is the positivity rate being fairly steady? Why is it in some areas where the uh, positive cases are actually going up, not going down? If we're, Because remember, they were blaming the fact that there were spikes on people who were getting together, not social distancing, not wearing masks, yet the numbers are not going down. So if we are blaming the spikes on the people not wearing masks, well, the people that were not wearing them are now wearing them more frequently. How can we blame any positivity rate, any increase on those people if that number is now going up? So the real question that we have to ask ourselves is, why aren't the positive rates going down? Why aren't the positive cases going down? Maybe, just maybe, it's because viruses run their natural course. Maybe it's because viruses seek out sick bodies or bodies who are not well equipped to fend off anything, let alone COVID-19. Maybe it's because the paper filter mask or the social distancing, maybe it's because that's not the answer to a public health crisis where a virus is running rampant among already sick people. And I like what Joe Cross said. I can't say this, so um, maybe, maybe he can. He says this, maybe the answer is to address the elephant in the living room, which Americans are fat, sick, and nearly dead. Folks, the answer to a sick population cannot be an outside-in approach. What does that mean? It cannot be that we try to control our external environment, manipulate our external environment, get rid of all the different microbes that we encounter, all the different viruses that we encounter. Right now, you and I are breathing in 1,800 different microbes. Right now, we encounter 3 million different microbes or viruses every single day. The answer cannot be limiting exposure to these things. That's impossible. It's impossible to limit exposure to our microbial world. The answer cannot just be wearing a paper filter mask, stuffing it in your pocket and re-wearing that and pretending that that's the answer to a sick population or disinfecting our environment. These are all outside in approaches, trying to control our outside circumstances in order to benefit the internal body. 
the body is innately intelligent. It's pre-programmed to fight these things off when it's equipped with the right resources and tools to do so. That's how we limit, not just limit our exposure, but that's how we start thinking about this very differently when it comes to our health. You want health, strengthen your body, strengthen the host, do the things necessary that would strengthen your internal environment. And what does that look like? Well, guys, it's simple. It's as simple as you doing this, eating foods that are closer to its natural state that are more life-giving, nutrient-dense foods. I don't even like the word nutrient density, but it's this is a way of looking at foods that is, okay, how much power is packed in this individual food group? As an example, nutrient density of something like bok choy or kale is incredible. These are superfoods, and yet what are we feeding our bodies most of the time? They're not superfoods. These are foods that are deprived of nutrition, deprived of nutrients. And remember this, if it's devoid of life, it's unlikely to sustain life. I'm going to say that again. If your food is devoid of life, it's unlikely to sustain life. Eating life-giving foods, foods by God versus foods by man, moving your body, my goodness, you look at right now school-aged children, you look out in Oregon and several other states are doing this, and maybe it's happening here in my own hometown. I just don't know it. They're doing these pods where they're literally, you go into a classroom, they put up this acrylic screen around each individual desk. The child takes their laptop out, opens their laptop. They're in terrible posture. They're sitting all day long. They're no longer having recess during this pandemic. They already limited the amount of research research. (laughs) Yeah, research too, but recess that they were having before this whole thing. And the teacher just rotates. Instead of the kids rotating and going in the hall and being around each other, now the teacher rotates. So now that child is sitting in a chair, sedentary for hours upon hours, looking at a screen, which we know changes the brain chemistry or brain waves and how that, that child interprets the world, affecting the eyes, but more so affecting the brain. And what are we doing? limiting the activity. And we're hoping to create a environment that sustains life as these kids get older. No, we're teaching them how to be sedentary. The muscles in their spine and their hips are completely developing that way where it's going to be difficult for this child to stand for long periods of time as this child gets older. Think about that. Who's worried, concerned about a children's hip flexors and the children's uh, muscle balance that's happening there as they're sitting For longer and longer each individual day, do you realize how hard this is going to be for these children to become active adults? We are sacrificing our future for the here and now. Think about that. How does that work financially when you put all of your expenses on a credit card, yet you don't make enough money to cover your expenses? How's that going to work out? Well, just like we can go bankrupt, just like we can bankrupt financially, we can bankrupt our health and we can bankrupt our future generations by teaching them that microbes and viruses, they are something to fear so much so that you literally sacrifice your body right now for the future. This is what's happening right now, and it's your and I's choice whether we go along with that and whether we continue down that road and realize this, is that there are people who are just going along with all of this because they don't want to stick out like a sore thumb in society. And they believe, a lot of people believe that uh, this will be over come, let's say, November or or 2021. Listen, it's not going to be over until we say it's over. It's not going to be over until we demand more transparency, until we demand what the research, what the data is that they're using to justify the measures that are being taken. Emergency powers that are being given are now being used to really hold us captive until an unproven to be safe vaccine that's been warp speed rushed to market comes out and then they say we can all go back to normalcy. Well, friends, we can't control that. We can stand up, we can speak up, we can try to hold our legislators and representatives accountable. We can do that with our vote. We can also do that with our voice. Go to standforhealthfreedom.com. There's a there's several campaigns. One that's going out to your local sheriff. That would be a great starting place. So check that out as well. But it also is up to us to take care of our own physical bodies so that we have the confidence 
in faith that our bodies are equipped to overcome just about anything that it encounters. And if that's the case, the greatest asset that you have is your health. Well, invest into your health. Do everything you can necessary to be healthy. And that gives you the confidence and certainty to understand that, hey, listen, I know that my years are numbered, but they always have been. They always have. And it's my choice how I live my life, whether that is in fear, whether that is caving to the circumstances, whether that is distancing myself for however many years that I have left, or it's living my life, being intentional, taking the right precautions, but living my life. And that's your choice. That's my choice. And it remains that, and it should be our choice of when we go back to normal. That is a personal decision. So, hey, stand up, make your voice be known. Start with that. Go to standforhealthfreedom.com. You'll see on the side there, act now. And if you're in Marion County, there's a campaign going straight to your local legislators. If you do business in Marion County, it's not even if you live in Marion County, if you do business of any kind, Marion County, remember, Always, the capitals affect the rest of the state and how the other health departments act. So it does matter how our Marion County Health Department acts. And there's a currently a campaign on StanforHealthFreedom.com that just with a click of a button can reach out directly to local legislators and let them know, hey, you're concerned with the overreach. You're concerned with how they're handling this. And it can be a just one step to make your voice be known. But we've seen... With Stand for Health Freedom, we've seen how just a handful of phone calls, a handful of emails can be a big turning point in how things are handled. Just last week, you saw that the campaign that we launched saw over 800 emails to local representatives. And then we saw over the weekend that the local council, the city council, was meeting to propose limiting the overreach of Marion County Health Department. Listen, your voice matters. Your voice makes a difference. We're making a difference, but we continue, We have to continue to take a stand. Go to standforhealthfreedom.com. Click on act now and join one of the campaigns to make your voice be known here locally. This is Dr. Nick Wilson, facebook.com slash askdrwilson. Instagram, you can get on there, Ask Dr. Wilson. YouTube, watch some of the old episodes or get some of the most recent information regarding either COVID, the flu shot, or ways that you can take a stand to get on YouTube. Type in Dr. Nick Wilson. That's an easy way to find us. If you do have feedback for me, remember, this is uh, even though this is now being broadcasted on many different platforms and in radio, if you do have specific feedback, whether it's that you would like more information or research, or you just want to tell me um, that you don't like me, well, hey, send that directly uh, to me. And you can do that by even just emailing me. It's uh, Dr. Wilson at maxlivingindy.com. That's a great way to get feedback directly to me. And I hear it, I receive it, and I read all of it. So send it directly to me and I can either personally answer that or have my assistant do that for me. But I want to talk to you just a little bit here about some practical ways that you can live your best life. And we talk a lot about nutrition and you hear me over the years, just beat this drum that what goes into your body becomes your body. And you've heard me recently say things like, well, if it's devoid of life, it's unlikely to be able to sustain life. Well, it's true. And what goes into your body then becomes your body and it becomes the fuel that you run on. Hey, if you were driving a Lamborghini, would you fill it up with junk gas? No, if you're driving a Lamborghini and it says right on there that it requires a certain octane of gas, you're going to fill it up with the best possible fuel. You're going to make sure that not only the outside looks nice, but hey, when that check engine light goes off, you know that thing is going to be expensive. If you run that thing into the ground, you're going to take it to the right person. You're going to be intentional with how you treat your Lamborghini. Well, boys and girls, we're driving along the road with a Lamborghini. It's your body, your body, because when you lose your health, you lose everything. Your greatest asset is not It's not your car. It's not your house. It's not your mortgage. It's not your 401k. It's not the money in the bank or investment that you have. It is your health. And so understanding that, and we talk about nutrition 
Well, this directly applies to how we fuel our body, but also our habits, our habits. And my question to you is, what are your habits right now? What are your habits? Are your habits producing what would be life-giving in the body? Is it what Tra- Dr. Tracy Gross says, is it blessing your body with the foods that you put in? And maybe you say, well, I don't know, doc, if it's blessing my body or if it's, if it's, if it's hurting my body. Well, here's some quick tips for you right now that you can start implementing and take on for yourself that will help you not only navigate this whole world of nutrition, because I do know that it does take navigating. There's a lot of misinformation that is out there when it comes to nutrition. Hey, count your macros, count calories, do the keto diet or do the Adkins, or you heard a long time ago, hey, do the uh, Nutrisystem. Well, what is some principled information that you can anchor to that will supersede any of the fad diets? What are some basic principles that you can live by that will help you navigate this where you can be confident in your nutrition? One principle is, is this food, is it food by God or is it food by man? If it's food by God, that means it's from its most natural state. It means that it's not been manipulated, that it's either from the earth or it's in its natural form and it's not been altered by man food by god versus food by man food by man is that which has been either chemically or genetically modified that's been made in a lab or maybe it's been made in a processing plant these are foods that have been either manipulated changed or processed now to be different from its original form i'll give you an example of this certain fats take canola oil there was once a time when canola oil was considered healthy and people thought this was a good healthy oil because it was low in fat well if you just look at things whether it's high in fat or low in fat you're going to come to the conclusion of it's healthy for me or not healthy for me well canola oil is a great example of that canola oil is actually synthetically made from what's called rapeseed oil they had very they had a lot of difficulty um i don't know marketing rapeseed oil for obvious reasons so they changed the name it stands for canadian low acid and they marketed this as a healthy fat or healthy alternative it's been chemically manipulated it's been changed and this is not a healthy oil it's actually very synthetic and that means that it's been uh, chemically altered or manipulated. Good healthy fats are things like avocado, raw seeds, raw nuts. Uh, And when I say raw, that also means unroasted, by the way. These are things like even butter. You know, people will say with margarine, I can't believe it's not butter. Well, it's not. It's one molecule away from plastic. And in fact, when you put butter and margarine out in the woods, the animals, guess what they eat? They eat the butter. They don't eat the margarine. Even the ants, they try to get to the butter and they get, they get uh, stuck in the margarine and you'll see just a couple of ants there, but they vastly go to the butter. Why is that? It's because even animals instinctively know what is right, what's wrong, what is actual food versus what is synthetic food. We've been tricked. We've been lied to when it comes to our nutrition, even coconut oil. Recently, the American Heart Association vilified coconut oil. They said that it's not a good healthy fat because it's, it's in the saturated fat family. Well, so is meat. So is grass-fed beef in the saturated fat family. Just because it's saturated fat does not mean it's bad for you or your heart. We need small amounts. We need small amounts of meat. We don't need to necessarily go crazy with meat. Too much protein actually turns to sugar anyway. And so we don't necessarily need large amounts of meat, but we do need it. Um, in fact, we have taste receptors in our mouth. The only reason why they're there is detect to detect certain forms of saturated fat or meat. And so our bodies need good, healthy fat. Our brain is made up of fat. Our uh, hormones are many times the, uh, our hormones are actually dependent on fat, fat soluble hormones, vitamins. There's certain fat soluble vitamins. So our brain is made up of fat and cholesterol. Our nervous system is coated with a liner of fat in order for the signal to go from brain to body it needs the healthy fat and so one of the missing nutrients in our diet is actually fat so there's a couple things here just quick tips for you to start living differently when it comes to nutrition one is cleaning up your carbs 
What does that mean? It is cleaning up the carbohydrates. And so where the carbohydrates come, the vast majority of American, you know where the carbohydrates are actually coming from? Sugar. What does that mean? Hey, not just the not just the uh, direct sugar that you're sprinkling on your either your 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 food or your drinks, it's being converted to sugar. So what does that mean? The grains, the breads, those are turning to sugar directly. And the vast majority of our grains in this country are sprayed with glyphosate, which is the ingredient in Roundup anyway. Did you know that glyphosate is being used as a drying agent for wheat? So they're spraying the wheat with glyphosate to speed up the drying time. And so if you're doing traditional grains that are not ancient grains and not organic and not being sprayed, well, guess what? You're feeding your body with an ingredient that is there to kill off bugs. What is your gut made of? Your gut is made up of bugs. It's been shown glyphosate has been linked to cancer. It destroy it can destroy the gut microbiome. It's something we want to avoid. So cleaning up your carbs means also, yes, getting rid of the sugar, but also things that turn to sugar, but also eliminating the, the, the grains that are known to be sprayed with glyphosate. So number one, clean up your carbs. Number two is fix your fats. We talked about how good, healthy fats and there are damaged fats. Well, we want to make sure we're loading up on good, healthy fats. It's a missing nutrient in the American diet because of the low fat craze uh, in the in the recent past. And so fix your fats, perfect your proteins. What does that mean? Well, there's grass fed beef, there's grain fed beef. Grain fed beef has been shown to increase the omega-6 fatty acids in the body, which create inflammation within the body. It perpetuates inflammation, drives up those inflammatory markers, and eventually makes you sick and causes heart problems. So perfect your proteins and then trash the toxins. Listen, guys, we are exposed to so many toxins on a day-in and day-out basis from the foods that we eat, the drugs that we take, the household cleaners that we expose ourselves to, cosmetics, ladies, and men, men, It's not just the ladies. What goes underneath your arm gets into your body too. And I bet if I were to look at many of your, you know, your, your, your antiperspirants, you're going to see aluminum in those antiperspirants and aluminum is a, is a, is a heavier metal. And it's been shown to cross the blood brain barrier. It's been linked to Alzheimer's, been linked to dementia. Um, It disrupts hormones. When we test people and do heavy metal tests, we find a lot of aluminum, a lot of mercury because of uh, the fillings in the mouth. Mercury is also from, you know, you get it from fish, you get it from many different sources of, 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 of mercury. And so we need to limit our exposure to these toxins. And so it's this, it's clean up your carbs, fix your fats, perfect your proteins, and then trash your toxins. That is a quick, simple, easy way to quick start and also kick start your metabolism when it comes to nutrition. This is Dr. Nick Wilson, facebook.com slash askdrwilson. Get on Instagram, find me at askdrwilson there, YouTube, just type in Dr. Nick Wilson. Anywhere where podcasts are played, that's Apple, that's that's Spotify, anywhere where podcasts are played, you can find episodes there. Hey, remember to think, don't think like everyone else. When the rest of the world seems to be crumbling and making decisions that don't seem to be in line with how you make decisions, maybe it's time to make decisions with a different frame, a different lens. Maybe it's time to join a new culture, a new community. We've got a great one here with Max Living. Have a great day. Be intentional about making it a great rest of your life. And we'll see you next time.